All right, we got dy dx equals y over x. Since this has both an x and a y in it, it means it is a separable differ differential equation. And so we're going to just separate the variables to the different sides. So we will get the y on the side with the dy in the numerator, and then we will bring the dx over to the other side so that it's no longer a denominator. So this should look like dy over y equals dx over x. Everybody good with that? Yeah. Cool. All right. So then from there, all we got to do is integrate both sides. So if we integrate the left and we integrate the right, what does the left become? 1 over y times dy. Right, but what's the integral of that? Um, oh yeah, ln of y. Actually, like absolute value y, right? Okay. And what about the right? Absolute value x. Okay, and they both get a plus a c, so we'll just put it on one side, plus c. All right, and then we need to figure out what that class oh, wait, why do you put a plus c on just one side? Uh, well, like we talked about last time, plus a constant here and plus a constant here, it's kind of insignificant to have it on both sides, right? I can just take this constant, subtract it from both sides, and then I have yeah. natural log absolute value y equals natural log absolute value x plus constant two minus constant one. And a constant minus a constant is still just a constant. So mm, all right. we just put it on one side. Um, all right, so at this point, now that we've um, integrated, the first thing that I like to do here is immediately solve for our c value. Some, uh, some textbooks and some teachers will tell you to solve for y first and then find your constant, but I think that that's a poor choice because that um, causes a lot of people to screw up. So I think it's better to just plug them in now. So if we plug in 2 for y and 2 for x, what's our constant? Zero. Should be zero. So that's going to tell us then that we have natural log absolute value y equals natural log absolute value plus zero. And if we're going to solve this for y, how do we solve that for y? How do you get y out of natural log of y? you raise it to e mm, yeah other way around you make it e to this power but yeah i see what you're saying yeah. we, we call that exponentiating it so we exponentiate this by making it e to that thing's power so that just gives us absolute value y equals absolute value of x and um, since we have an absolute value on both sides of that um it means that we either have y equals positive or negative x. It could be either way. Um, and so, well, if we look in here, if y is 2 and x is 2, they must have the same sign. So that positive or negative is not going to matter to us. We're just going to end up with y equals x. But is there a discontinuity in all of this? Do we need to put uh, x equals 0? Yeah, we cannot have x equal to zero. Even though we simplified this thing out to y equals x, which doesn't have any discontinuities, we have to take into account any discontinuities that there might have been after we integrated. So because there's a natural log absolute value of x there, x cannot be zero. And so we have to pick the continuous portion that includes the initial condition. So this would only be valid for zero to infinity, right? Because x equals 2 falls between 0 and infinity, not between negative infinity and 0. Good or no? Good. Cool. Any questions there? All right, let's do another one. What should we do first here? Uh, 
bring the dx to the right and then bring the y plus five to the left. Okay, good. So what's that gonna give us? It's gonna give us dy over y plus five, right? Yeah. Is equal to x plus two dx. Everyone agree? Yeah. All right, cool. Um, so now we'll integrate both sides of this. So how do we do that? ln uh, absolute value of y plus five equals one. Mm, yeah, no. Yeah, no, no, no. Uh, x squared two. plus two x. Plus a constant. Everybody agree yeah. with that? Yeah. Cool. So we know that when x is zero, y is one. So what does that give us? That gives us natural log of six equals zero squared over two plus two times zero plus our constant. So what's our constant? Natural log of six. Natural log of six. And that should give us then natural log absolute value y plus five equals x squared over two plus two x plus ln six. And how do we solve for y? What's the first step? Exponentiate. Exponentiate, ah, oh, good, we got that word down now, that's great. So this gives us absolute value y plus five equals e to the x squared over two plus two x plus ln six. Now, um, we want to do a couple things to simplify this down. First off, if we look up here at e to the x squared over 2 plus 2x plus ln 6, there should be a way to um, rewrite that so there's no longer a natural log of 6 up there in the exponent. Anybody know how we could do that? Can't you break it up into e to the x squared over 2 plus 2x times e to the natural log of 6? Exactly, right? That's just exponent rules, right? E to the A plus B plus C is E to the A plus B times E to the C, or E to the A times E to the B times E to the C, however you want to do it. And so what is E to the natural? Oh, actually, we'll write this step fully out. So E to the X squared over 2 plus 2X two times E to the natural log of 6. And what's E to the natural log of 6? 6. Should just be 6. So we should be able to just put that 6 out in front, 6e to the x squared over 2 plus 2x. Two um, and then how do I clear the absolute value? What does that do to the other side? It means it could be either plus or minus, positive or negative, exactly. And then we'll solve y equals subtract the negative, subtract 5 to get negative 5 plus or minus 6e the x squared over 2 plus 2x. Two and as it sits right now, negative 5 plus or minus 6e to the x squared over 2 plus 2x two is not one single function. That's two different functions. That's the plus one and the minus one. So we have to decide which one we need. And how do we determine which one we need, the plus or the minus? Plus. We look at the point that we're given. Yep, we look at the point that we're given. If x is 0, y is 1. So if x is zero, this should be e to the zero, which is one times six is six. So is it negative five plus six or is it negative five minus six to give us y equals one? Plus six. Should be the plus. So y equals negative five plus six e to the x squared over two plus two x. And are there any restrictions on the x values of this? Anywhere as we go along after taking our integral? No. Nope, right? This is valid for all real numbers. Right? I can square any x value or any number, divide it by two, multiply it by two, add those things together, do e to any power, multiply it by six, do negative five plus any number. All those are just numbers, right? And any of those operations can be done to any number. So no restrictions here.
Good or no? Good. Anybody have any questions on these? All right. Why don't you guys see if you can do this one on your own before you, well, before you try to work on it on your own, let's, let's start off by simplifying down the right-hand side uh, to get it. Because that one doesn't actually look like a product or a quotient of two different functions in terms of X or Y, does it? The way that it's written, at least? No. No, right, it's just E to the X minus Y. But how can we rewrite E to the X minus Y? E to the X over E to the Y? Yes, over E to the Y. All right, so from there, we'll let you guys work through that one. Should be pretty quick and straightforward, I think. So just take about two minutes here and see if you can separate the variables, integrate, and find your constant and get an answer. Ready to go. So first off, you just brought the e to the y to the left. It gave you e to the y dy, and the dx to the right to give you e to the x dx, which made both those integrals very easy. Right? e to the y equals e to the x plus our constant. Everybody good there? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So um, e to the y equals e to the x plus c. Plug in 0 for x and y for 2, so e squared equals e to the 0 plus c, or what's our constant? It's e squared minus 1. one. So our constant is e squared minus 1. Um, so we'll just go back in, and that gives us e to the y equals e to the x plus e squared minus 1. And how do I get y by itself? Natural log. Exponentiate. Now we take the natural log of both sides. The natural log of e to the y is just y, and then the natural log of this. Does this natural log go inside absolute values? No. No. A lot of people accidentally start putting everything with a natural log inside of absolute values, just because we do it when we do the integral of 1 over x. but. Just because we're taking a natural log doesn't mean it goes in absolute values. And then we need to determine if there are any um, discontinuities on this. So natural log, you can only take the natural log of something that is positive, right? Can't take the natural log of a negative, can't take the natural log of zero. Um, so first off, what can you tell me about e squared minus 1? It's always positive. Right, e squared minus one is positive. What about e to the x? Also always positive. Always positive also, right? You take a positive number like e and raise it to any power, you're gonna get a positive. So we got a positive plus a positive, which tells us this is always Positive. positive, which means we can always take the natural log of it. So our answer is just y equals natural log e to the x plus e squared minus 1. Good or no? Good. Cool. All right. Um, we feeling OK about those or no in general? I hope that you will have some homework tonight where you have to practice some of these. All right, so we all feel like we could do these or no? Yeah. All right, cool. So let's look at a basic application of these separable differential equations. So if we have the change in some variable with respect to time, dy dt, is equal to 
some constant k times the amount of that same variable, right? Those are both y's. That differential equation is the differential equation that represents exponential change, so exponential growth or exponential decay, which you should be familiar with exponential growth and exponential decay, right? From either a chemistry class or from your previous math classes where they talked about like, you know, you have a radioactive isotope of samarium-151 and we're going to watch how quickly it decays and after 3,000 years, how much of it is present or something like that. Remember doing those? Yeah. Yeah, or, or things like, you know, I've got some rabbits and they're multiplying exponentially. How many rabbits will I have after two years, you know, if they increase it, if it doubles every month or something, right? Those kinds of things, exponential growth, exponential decay, bacteria in a Petri dish spreading, that kind of stuff. So this all comes from a differential equation. So if we were to pretend like this was, well, we're not pretending, if we were to look at this as if it was a differential equation that needed to be solved, like a separable differential equation, um, what would we have to do with the y term? And what would we have to do with the dt term? Move them to their respected sides. Right, so the y would need to come over here. We get dy over y. And over here, you get k times dt, right? And remember that k is just a constant. I mean, you probably remember at some point from doing exponential growth or decay that there's like, you know, it's always, not always, but it's usually like e to the 0 0.073t or something like that. Remember having like some weird number in there times the t in the exponent when you did exponential growth and decay? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that's that's what that k value ends up being. So let's solve this differential equation. What's the integral of dy over y? Ln of uh, yeah absolute value of y. Okay. And what's the integral of k, a constant, dt? Um, Would it just be kt? Yep, kt and then plus a constant, right? Everybody good there? Yeah. Okay. Well, how do we solve for y? E That's times good. ln, e times both sides. Mm, not e times, but we're exponentiating it. We're raising them as powers of e. And so that gives us absolute value y equals e to the kt plus c. Yeah? Yeah. OK. Now, um, if we think about exponential growth and exponential decay, if we're talking about how much of something is present, right, are we ever going to have a negative value of how much is present? No. Right. We're never going to have. We're never going to have a negative value there, right? We're always going to have some number of rabbits that have multiplied, or some bacteria in our petri dish. Never negative bacteria. So we could call this y equals e to the kt times e to the c. And what's e to the c? What's a constant e to another constant c? Constant. E to c. It's just some other constant, right? We'll call it a. How about a equals e to the c? So we end up with something like y equals a e to the kt. Good or no? Good. All right. Now, there's something else is on this page. Did I do it on this page? No, I didn't. Maybe I did. All right. Um, if I have this y equals a 
e to the kt. That looks probably very similar to the exponential growth and decay formulas that you're familiar with. You've probably seen something very similar to that. But there's a special thing about this a value. What is that a value? Anybody real good at their chemistry and remember that? Isn't that the starting amount? Exactly. A should be the starting amount. We should be able to prove that. If T equals zero, right, then Y would be our initial amount, which we would call usually Y not, right? Y sub zero, Y not. Right, if t is zero, that's the initial, we're at the initial amount of y at time equals zero. Everybody agree with that? So we'd have y naught equals a e to the k times zero. And what's zero times k? Zero. Zero. And what's e to the zero? One. And a times one is just a. a. So we would get then that A should be equal to the initial amount. And so we could then go in and replace that and say Y equals Y naught E to the K T. And that is, with any luck, the exponential growth and decay formula that you learned about way back in like second grade, right? And it just comes from a differential, a separable differential equation where the amount of one variable but the, sorry, the change in one variable, the change in y, let's say, is proportional to the amount of that same variable. So if I had dx dt equals kx, that's exponential growth or decay. If I had dz dt equals kz, that's exponential growth. If I had d theta dt equals 700 theta, k is just 700, and that's exponential growth or decay. Okay. So that's something you'll want to be able to recognize um, Sometimes they'll ask about that on the AP test. Good or no? Good. Kind of cool that that's where that comes from. Huh? And they just told you that formula. They're like, look at this fun formula. Plug in some numbers and you get answers, right? Well, yeah, you get that all from calculus, right? That's, you know, calculus is sort of the beginning of where everything comes from. So pretty neat. Um, all right, this is what we just did, right? We got y equals y not e to the kt. Um, you're probably familiar with this in terms of like compound interest formulas. Remember, remember the compound interest formulas? Seen those before? A equals p e to the rt. That's just the same thing, right? Comes from the same idea. Or p times 1 plus r over n to the nt. That's just doing it with a different base without doing your continuously compounding interest. You don't need to know these formulas just bringing them up to be like, hey, remember these? You guys remember those or no? Yeah. Yeah, good. All right, let's do one quick thing with this. Um, oftentimes what's asked of um, a person doing fun chemistry junk is to find the half-life of something. And so if we want to find the half-life, we would just replace our final amount with half of our initial amount. And you'll note that I've also put in a negative here. So whenever we have a y equals y naught e to the kt or negative kt, if the k value is negative, that means it's decay, exponential decay. And if the k value up here, if the value in front of the t is positive, it means it's exponential growth. Okay. So if we're talking about a situation and it's not likely that you're gonna have to do a bunch of problems like these, but if you're talking about a situation in which you know, the amount of something is decreasing, should be a negative some number times t. We're talking about the amount of something is increasing, it should be a positive some number times t. Okay. So here we're looking at the half-life. So how long does it take to go from, from y equals y naught e to the negative kt to half of what we started with? So we want our final amount y to equal one half of y naught. So how could we do that?
What's the first thing I could do here? Couldn't I just divide both sides by why not? Yeah or no? Yeah. Yeah. All right. And so couldn't I take the natural log of both sides, which would give me negative kt equals natural log of a half? Yeah. And what's the natural log of half? That's natural log of one minus natural log of two. What's the natural log of one? Zero. So this just becomes Zero. negative kt equals negative ln two. Negatives will cancel, right? And what is yeah. t equal? t is just equal to the natural log of two divided by k. And so what that's going to tell us is that if you ever are asked to find the half-life of something and you are given a differential equation, dy dt equals 0.000376y, all you have to do is take natural log of two, divide it by that very small number, and that will tell you how long it takes for half of the radioactive nuclei in that sample to decay. That's how you find the half-life. And every once in a while, they might ask something about that um, on the AP test. So this is a good thing to know, natural log of two over K. So let's do one of these. We just want to find the half-life here. So what would we do? We are given the differential equation, dy dt equals negative ky. Right? The negative is telling us that this is decay. The k value is equal to 0 0.0077. So to find the half-life, should we just multiply be... multiply it by one half again? Or... What? Don't we multiply it by one half again or? Nope, we're just going to use the formula that we just derived on the previous page. Half-life t is equal to natural log of 2 over k. So all we got to do is say natural log of 2 over k. And what do you get? And so there is no negative because this formula only works for decay and that negative was what the negative in the original equation is what tells you that it's decay. Right. This indicates decay. Not decay like the K, but DK, right? It indicates decay. And then our K value is always this positive constant that's in front of it. Yeah, because I mean, all that would happen is if you divide it by a negative, you just end up with a negative answer. It's not going to change the numeric, you know, it's not going to change the absolute value of that answer. It's just going to make it a negative answer, which makes no sense. I mean, it's not going to take me negative 100 years or whatever. I don't know what it is, but it's not going to take us negative 100 years to, you know, have half of this decay. It'll take 100 years. I got 90.019. Is that we got 90.019? Other, uh, other people agree with that or no? Yeah. 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 Cool. So pretty straightforward. The biggest thing to take out of all of this, besides can you solve a separable differential equation, is somewhere along here that if you have this differential equation, this represents exponential growth or decay. And the most likely place you'll see this is in a multiple choice question where they'll just say, all right, here is some differential equation, dy dt equals 0.7y. And they'll say, is this, you know, what, what sort of change does this represent? Does it represent exponential change? Does it represent linear growth? Does it represent quadratic growth? Does it represent, you know, one of those things, and you'll say no, because this is dy dt equals ky, the, the uh, 
change in the variable y is proportional to the amount of y, that tells us it's exponential growth or decay. Does that make sense? Yeah. Cool. Um, let's see here. So that took less time than I was expecting it to. Are we feeling pretty okay or no about all of the differential equation stuff? Yeah. Anybody have any questions? 